Hey, I'm Scott. And I'm Charity. And we're pastors of St. City, a church outside of St. Louis. We've been together over 15 years. And we've been through a lot. And are going through a lot. We've failed and succeeded. We've flown and we've fallen. And we've lived a whole lot of life along the way. We've worked together more than 15 years in marriage, in ministry, business, and parenting. And did I mention we have four kids, nine and under? And if we've learned anything, it's that life is not about the arrival. It's about all the life along the way. Hey. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I'm excited for this week. I bet you are. This episode is going to be about business, but also how we work and operate in business together and how we keep faith a part of everything we do in business. Yep. Do you think we do great at this or no? You know what? I'm not sure. I think my opinion of it probably is like switches daily. Usually when level. someone does a podcast on something, whether it's a specific episode or a podcast in general, it's because they are the foremost experts in that field. Not sure that's the case. I'm not sure that's the case for us. For, for many of our episodes, because we're not about arriving. We're about no. all the stuff that happens in between now and when we get to experience God when we leave this place. So I really, I, I want to specifically talk about this week, what it's like being married, being in business, but also how we have individually found a way to keep faith and our relationship with God at the forefront of everything we do at work and the forefront of everything that we do in business. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So for us... I think um, a lot of it has to do not with balance because balance is a myth. You can't balance. You just have to prioritize. So there's different seasons in your life where um, you only have so many hours in a day. And some seasons, you know, a chunk of those hours is going to go to um, one aspect of your life. And some seasons there's going to be more rest. And some season it's going to be more time with family or church. Um, but our pastor, Mike Plain, told us that a long time ago, that balance is a myth. You can't balance everything. That's kind of a lie that our culture has told us that we can. And, you know, if you're just good enough, you can hold everything at the same time with the right balance and do everything. And that's not true. And so when we have a lot of things on our plate, like we have our business, um, which is a security company, low, low voltage, and we do um, security cameras, we do access control, we do integration, we do network systems. Network she systems. like looks at me like, help me, I don't even know what the things we do completely are called. There's all sorts of uh, names for the type of work that we do. We, be, we basically integrate all technology mm -hmm. uh, together together. Uh, whether it's in phone systems or IT systems. I'm not saying this so that you'll look up our company. But, but there's very specifically, there are a lot of moving parts to yeah. the business that we run. And there is not just like one product that we sell and people come in and pull off of a shelf. And so how we interact with customers and how we interact with clients and corporations and we are in their homes, we are in their businesses, we are connecting with them at their workplace. It matters how we're doing and how we handle ourselves when we're around people. Yeah. And, um, like, like Scott was saying, this isn't just a, Oh, you know, we just, it's a drop ship where we have a website, people, you know, everything's automated and it's hands off and it's like very hands on. And, um, I, with Scott, I help install things. I help run things. I, I do a lot of different things. And so, um, for a while, the whole myth of balance and thinking I can do everything for the business and everything for the church, everything as a wife, everything as a mother. And, you know, if I fail at any of those things, it's because I have a deficit and having the wisdom from our pastor say, no, like that's not how it works, um, really helped. And so the way that, you know, I think both of us, I know at least I look at our business is through the lens of our priorities. Our priority number one is our relationship with God. And then is our marriage, then is our kids. 
and then is our mission as a family, which is our church, and then everything else. And so I look at our business through the lens of it is something that supports us and helps us to be able to do those other things well. Mm. And it's also something that we're trying to have build as a heritage to our kids to be a blessing. And so sometimes it's easy to look at it as it it's more than, I don't know how to phrase this. Um, sometimes I can get that backwards and not see it as a tool to enable us to do the other things well, which is our relationship with God, our relationship with each other, and our relationship with our kids, and then our mission through St. City. And um, I think the times that I've looked at it as a priority over those other things, and we sacrifice those other things to make sure that it goes, it's gotten very tense. Mm. And, and so it's um, a kind of constant process because it is a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of resources. But I have found that whenever I look at it in my mind and like how we do things as, you know, this is something we're investing in, but we're investing in it as a means to be able to make the important things stable in our life. Yeah, that's so good. So I did not coin this term, but one that I've always liked is business as a mission. And people starting businesses so that they can reach a community, so that they can live out their faith, and that they can show love. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to just go into ministry full time and become a pastor and go to seminary and, you know, devote yourself completely to uh, any one, um, you know, job title for ministry that you can actually through your life and how you live it, how you conduct yourself, how you operate your business, how you err on the side of grace, how you go above and beyond, how even when it seems like the job is done, you pick it up and you take it an extra mile. Uh, Those are all things that we can do in order to help people know that the people of faith, the people specifically who have given their life to Jesus are real in the way that they live. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times what happens um, is that we are one way when we're inside a building we call a church, and we're another way when we leave and we're at work or we're in business because you can't mix this with that. Well, here's here's what I want to help you understand, that what doesn't mix well is politics, because politics doesn't really mix well with really anything other than politics. Like Minded politics. Oh, mixes yeah. well with like, like minded, minded politics. politics. That's, that's so that's good. So true, too. <laughs> but really, what uh, what I mean is, as being um, business people and business owners, we're not just saying, hey, represent the conservative views and, hey, just just do these things and let people know that you're, you're this and wear this hat and do this. It, it, it actually is a way of life. Now, in our business, we have um, a way that we gain customers. We have a way that we keep customers. We have a way that we build them. And we have an opportunity to just be bull moose and threaten this and that when people aren't paid. Or we have a way to speak directly and, and, and to be concise, consistent, and in love and a- allow uh, the truth and the grace of God's Spirit to lead us in how we conduct ourselves in business. One of the things that happens to me a lot of times is that in that process, I end up being a doormat and I don't build people. A lot of times it's for really service bad. hours, <laughs> I don't build people for things that I do. And ultimately what ends up happening is I, I, I take away from what is used to actually support our full-time ministry, which is uh, the center and St. City Church. And so one of the blessings of being in business Um, And there is no doubt that God's hand has been on our business through this entire process of us being in ministry, um, 
is that we have gone through seasons where the business itself has been able to lift up uh, the church, lift up uh, and maintain the finances of things that were needed in order for us to continue to reach people in our community. And it has been a real blessing. Um, one of the more recent things that has happened is we've begun to be able to employ people who are a part of our church. Um, and it's not something that we look to do, but it's an honor to have other uh, house houses that are faith-filled families and, 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 and people who love the Lord begin to work in your business and represent God with the same character and integrity that we want to represent our business. Because um, a lot of times you think of ministry and you think of somebody that, you know, wears the collar and isn't, you know, a traditional church building and that's all they do. And yeah, there are people that do that. But the vast majority of believers are not going to be in a situation where the only thing they ever do is um, minister through the doors of an established church. The vast majority of believers are going to be in a position where they have influence on a secular circle or environment of people in a workplace. And I would I would beg to say that the um, the chance or rate of the gospel being spread is much higher and much likely, much more likely in the situations where believers are going into a secular environment and still looking like Jesus mm. than in the situations where we're expecting some of the secular world to come to a building and hopefully receive what we have for them yeah. because their guard is down. People at a workplace environment, they are who they are. They don't have the same duality that a lot of Christians have. And so if we put down our duality of having like a Sunday version of ourselves and a work version of ourselves, and we just always have a Jesus version of ourselves, then the people that we were around will see who Jesus is for who Jesus is, not this version that we adapt to and we step into a building that has a steeple on it. Mm, and so good. in my opinion, I think there's been many instances where um, our business has given us the opportunity to minister at a much um, more authentic level just because people aren't looking at you as a pastor, they're looking at you as a businessman. And so whenever they see you acting or doing business in a certain way, or if a conversation does come up, it's, um, it's seen as this is who you are. This isn't who you are pretending to be. Yeah. Well, and it's it, ministry itself as far as the organizational structure, is a little bit different than business itself. However, when we follow the principles of God, the way that we operate and conduct ourselves really shouldn't be all that different from the way that we operate and conduct ourselves in church. Now, here's the thing. We're to follow the laws of the land. So there may be moments where it's, it's not proper uh, for us to say or do or respond one way or another to the actions of someone. And then there are opportunities where there are intimate moments where people are uh, inquisitive about the way that you live or the way that you're different. And, and to be honest with you, it happens in business quite a bit for us. On uh, We begin to see people... Uh, and maybe it's because it's not really hard if you look us up online that we're not just business owners and, and you know, um, but we are ministers as well. And, and, and we pastor a church and we plant churches. And um, so maybe that's one of the things that happens. But I've seen on multiple occasions within our business relationships, within clients and customers, uh, even a Muslim very specifically telling another Muslim, uh, don't talk like that. This, this man's a preacher. Don't say that. And you should have seen the look on the other Muslim's face when he said that. And it wasn't because he asked me. It wasn't because I told him. It wasn't because I speak about those things. But what ends up happening is, is when God's Spirit goes with you, even people of other faith in many instances and situations understand that there's something unique 
in the life of a believer. And no other faith tells us to go and make disciples and to live a life of faith that doesn't just require us to be in a temple to, to, to give sacrifices or to do a specific set of things, but we're to go. And one of the things that I, I love doing is I love uh, allowing people to kind of wonder why it is when they say or joke or do the things that they do that I don't engage. Um, and a lot of times what it does is I don't, I don't ever intentionally do anything to make someone feel belittled by their actions. Um, because what that does is that will turn people off if they ever were to find out that I was a believer and I responded in a way that was out of love. Uh, it doesn't help them grow closer to the Lord. But one of the things that God will do by his spirit is reveal to people that there's something unique in your life and something unique in the way that you do business and you conduct yourself. Um, so one of the things that is really important to me in, in having employees, there's a scripture that it's in Leviticus 19.13, and I, I think about this more with employees than I do some of the other things because it talks about your neighbor. Leviticus 19.13 says, You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. Then it says, The wages of a hired worker shall not remain with you all night until the morning. So whenever you labor, whenever someone labors for you on the behalf of your business or who has done something for you, you should be quick to reward their work and their labor. And it's one of the things that I think is so important. If you have employees who understand the way that you operate and it's with honesty and integrity and that you're not trying to keep anything from them, but you want to help them grow and you want to help them do the things that are um, good, what ends up happening is your employees will grow as well and they will be... um, encouraged, they will be edified, and they will also know the person that they work for and on behalf of cares about them and their situation. Um, So one of the things that um, I want to just kind of share about is when, when we're in business, we definitely don't lead by saying who we are. We definitely don't say, come in and walk into a business and say, this is what we believe and expect us to conduct this way. One of the things that I love about the way that Jesus ministers to people as he just goes about his journey, life along the way, as he does these things, is that he is relational. And when the opportunity is afforded, he does speak truth and love. And I think that your work and being um, having integrity Um, a lot of times opens the door for us to be able to have conversations like that. And Jesus was pure, and we're not perfect, and there's really no way for us to say that our business is perfect, our model is perfect, that we're able to pull off everything that we say. But one of the things that's very important is that we we don't overpromise, that we very specifically say what we can do, and then we over-deliver on what we say, not so that we can just have repeat customers, but that our our faith and belief in Jesus is is not something that we necessarily say in business all of the time, but that people can experience those things through our integrity and through us operating with an understanding of what we believe. Mm-hmm. So what do you think the hardest thing is? in running a business while you have a family and while you also lead a church? I really think time management is, uh, takes its toll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I would say that because there's always a fire to put out, not just in church, but in business, there's always something to keep you busy. Um, but being able to rest in those moments where, uh, you are able to really just um, be with your family. Take time to slow down 
And I would say one of the biggest challenges, at least for me in our business and in our company, is to delegate. And what I've found is it doesn't just silo itself in the area of business in our life. It actually transfers for me over to ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I would say delegation and time management. And what's so interesting when you ask that question is when I say those two things, I think that if I delegated more, time management would be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. What about you? (laughs) I think the hardest... Thanks for putting me on the spot because we did not talk about that pre-episode. No, we didn't. Um, I think the hardest thing for me with business is... um, honestly not being like man like why can't we just do ministry (laughs) because it is that's a lot and so there is part of me that's it's hard to take the hat off and put it back on especially with having the kids well in transparency we can just do ministry and when we when we allow god to lead us in business we can do it that way or we can just full-time embrace ourselves in one or the other. We can be immersive in that. However, we know that the way that God is blessing both things and not really said stop one or stop the other, we're kind of like a little bit where we're like, we want to hear from God. Mm -hmm. And so we know that there's struggles and there's pains and time management and there's just so much extra effort that goes into splitting hairs And I could use the scripture that says you can't serve two masters and it's difficult to be in ministry full time and have a business full time and be a full time parent and manage all of the things that we do. However, thankfully, God has enabled us and given us the grace that we have for this time and for this moment. And one of the things that I have enjoyed so much is seeing you as a result of the business, be able to be a part of each area and not just be siloed in one thing. And I think that that flexibility is something that we've been able to thrive in. There are times where it seems as though it's all going to break down because there is just so much going on in the family, in the business, and in the church. But one of the things that we've been uniquely blessed with is this ability that when things get tough, we have an endurance that God gives us that there are times where we can look back on situations and obstacles and think, if it wasn't for God, I don't know how we made it through that. Or if we would have known how hard it was going to be. Would we yeah, we, maybe, we, we <laughs> may have taken a different road. And, and I can tell you that um, it is like one of my greatest joys to be side by side with you in ministry. It's one of my greatest joys to be side by side with you in business and to raise our kids and have our house and be parents together and be married. But to be honest with you, I don't want any of those things to happen at the cost of us. Mm -hmm. And I think that being a couple in ministry, it's important that God would never ask you to sacrifice your marriage on the altar of ministry. God would never ask you to sacrifice your relationship on the altar of business. God would never ask you to sacrifice your family on the altar of anything else. Now that sounds weird because he did it with Abraham, but I want you to know that very specifically, Abraham was used the way that he was because he was willing to sacrifice what God was willing to sacrifice. Well, and God also has this awesome way of coming down into our reference and the reference and the culture of where Abraham was, was child sacrifice. And so for him to come down and, and, um, it was about obedience and it was about submission, but it was also about saying, Hey, I am the God and I don't require this. I give you life. I don't take life. Mm. And it was like a reference to that, that God's bigger than that. And God shows up in our reference as well, where, um, we don't, he doesn't require us to step out of our world. He comes down into our world mm. and he shows up through our, our point of reference and shows his goodness through that. That's so good. So we have gone through waves of growth in ministry 
separate from waves of growth in our family. We've gone through waves of growth in our business, separate from waves of growth in our church and our ministry. And we have seen one, two, or all of them go through waves of growth at the same time. And I would say one of the things that's happening right now is that we are seeing God not only bless our business, but God is beginning to bless our church in a new and a fresh way right now. And I know that the trickle-down effect is happening in our children's lives because they are in and around all of the things that God is doing. Last night we were at the dinner table and our three-year-old prayed. And as he prayed, he, he had legit prayer. And he said, Jesus, I love you so much. And he said, and I love Daddy so much and Mama so much. You like how I said Daddy first? He said Daddy first. Yeah. And he went specifically through all the things that he cared about. And he said, thank you for healing my body. Thank you for healing my owies. And he very specifically talked about this. And one of the seasons that we're in right now is we've just been praying and thankful. We're seeing healing take place. And we saw it personally take place in our lives, and we've, we're seeing this happen in our church. And we're actually seeing growth um, by faith of people who are becoming a part of fellowship in our church and at this building we call the center. But we are seeing um, God begin to help us have business contacts and relationships that we have no business having at the stage that we are in business, we are actually growing as God is connecting us with people that require us uh, to grow as a business and to actually implement more processes and structure. And so what we're seeing is, is that God oftentimes grows us by doing something and creating a necessity for us to work out, how do we do this? And I know that the disciples experienced this when so many people gave their heart to Jesus so quickly. How do we do this? Look at all these people. How do we feed them? Look at all these people. How are we going to go out and heal this many people? How are we going to minister and pastor this many people? And so a lot of what happened in the early church was out of necessity. And the same thing can happen in business. Sometimes it can catch you off guard, but other times God will prepare you in advance. And scripture says, he'll, he who began a good work in you will see it to completion, that God has prepared in advance all of the things that he has for you to do. And I've just been excited to be in business and in ministry and in marriage together yeah. because we do believe that we're better together, don't we? Yeah. You're, so, you're tired. Are you tired this morning? Well, she's tired. That means that it's time to wrap it up. So we want to thank you for joining us on this week's episode. And listen, this wasn't set up to be a nuts and bolts of how to be a successful business person, but we wanted to talk about our life and our experience of how our faith has impacted how we do business and how we manage life in the midst of all of that. So we want to say thanks for joining us this week. Yeah, and we can't wait to see you on our next episode of Life Along the Way. Make sure you like the podcast, share it. We would love for you to rate it. Five stars only, please. (laughs) (laughs) Just joking, but not really. Um, But we will see you next time. So have an awesome week. See ya. Bye.